What's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. So, I got some uh, new news, I guess. It's kind of similar to the old news, which is we weren't going to be using the pick uh, 2027. Now, it's been reported that the Lakers would much rather try to move Westbrook in the offseason, and they may be willing to uh, attach a 2029 first round pick, try to get us a max contract player in his stead. Um, if somebody would be willing to do that, aka if Ben Simmons isn't moved, they're going to try to do that, or James Harden isn't moved, they're going to try to do that. Uh, I don't know who I, you know I've learned something from the Philadelphia 76ers waiting can open up things for you that maybe you don't see any sign of right now uh, as you can see right now they have a chance to get James Harden we didn't see any path to that in the summertime so that taught me a real lesson I took that information held it close sometimes it is just best to wait um like I, like I said in the previous video, I don't think there's any move that we can really make to make us better. Giving up Russell Westbrook when his value is this low is not probably best for us. Um, maybe he raises his trade value before the end of the season. It's likely he probably will, to be honest with you. I can't see him continuing to play this bad uh, in our system over the next several months. Um, even though it's been this long, uh, familiarity in more and more games just bring us closer and closer to having an understanding of what it is he can be in our, in our system. And plus... I hate to do this. I hate to say this again. But if the Lakers go ahead and fire Frank Vogel right now, maybe we can find someone in here who can help us change our style of play to where we can make him look better, raise his straight value, and that sort of thing. What, it, what comforts me about that notion is that it's been reported that he and the coaching staff aren't really getting along right now. So if we're not getting rid of him, maybe we get lucky and they decide to get rid of Frank because that's ultimately what I'm hopeful will happen, as you guys know. So... I'm actually okay with this. I'm very okay with this because I don't think they have any deal in place for Russell Westbrook that makes any sense. And I think that's basically what they're saying. We don't have a deal. So um, let's let's just put our best foot forward and tell everybody that we're choosing to do this rather than to say we can't get rid of them. So I think that's what's happening there. Uh, but I don't have a problem with it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's probably what I would tell them to do. You know, you don't come out and say, hey, we don't have nothing. I'm sorry. You just say, you know what? They probably in our best interest to just wait. So. That would be the statement I'd release. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I I think it's a lost season, you guys. You know, Russell Westbrook, he's a great guy, man. But uh, he's just having a lot of issues here. And, you know, I think, as I said, I think the lights are too bright. I think he needs to be somewhere else. But I also don't think we need to just be pushing him to a different place just because he needs that. We need to do what's best for us because we've been doing what's best for everybody else. And we're the one holding the bag as a franchise. We don't have no picks. We're doing everything for Bron, doing everything for AD, doing all the things for Westbrook, Westbrook and they, you know, with respect to them, when is somebody going to start doing stuff for us? You know, and you know, my mouthpiece represents the organization, not no single player and certainly not no one year's roster. So at this point, I'm just looking at the situation. I'm saying, yeah, this ain't in our best interest. This is not, you know, trading Russell Westbrook for John Wall in the 27 pick obviously is ridiculous. It's laughable. Um, trading Russell Westbrook for a bunch of scraps that make us worse this season we don't want to be worse this season uh we just have to manage him better you know if he's gonna to continue to play like he did we just sit him so philadelphia 76ers also showed me something that you can take a player who's not working that well just don't play him and you can be okay <laughs> now granted um, they have Joel B playing at all-star, superstar level, and Tyrese Maxey coming out of nowhere playing well. But we got LeBron James. We got Anthony Davis, who's also playing well. So it's like we can kind of just, just you know, sit him. Sit him. If he's going to continue to bumble and fumble, and you just hit him. AD and LeBron James should be enough. Fix the other guys. Fix the other guys. Fix the style of play. And you may look up and Russell Westbrook starts being somebody else. And you're happy you have him suddenly. He could turn into the player we all want him to be. Time heals things. You know, I look at, at, at AD. Let's say we would have given up on AD and traded him midway through the season because he was struggling so bad throughout the start of the season. Now look at what he's turned into for us. Look at what he is after the injury. He's playing the way we want to see AD play. Maybe we get lucky and Russell Westbrook does that. Maybe we see two months down the road Russell Westbrook can be well here or, or get used to some things or come to a different type of conclusion help himself in some ways that we can't even foresee right now i would like to see us help him by removing the antagonist which is frank vogel but otherwise 
Uh, and I say antagonists because it's been reported they don't get along. But, you know, it's one of those situations where it's like, look, let's, let's try to be smart for a change. Everything we've done has been brash and stupid. Let's just be real. Just about everything we've done has been brash and stupid. It's time to chill. It's time to think. It's time to build properly. It's time to find ways of making this team better next season and try to get ourselves some assets going forward. So these are the type of reports that I can appreciate. You know, even though I said I want us to hurry up and do something, not if it's going to make us worse and certainly not if it's going to mortgage our future. Now it's time to start recouping and figuring things out. Uh, so that's what I got to say, man. Nobody's going to do anything crazy right now because, you know, that's just that's only me who would be willing to trade Braun right now. Like I would actually do that. <laughs> But I don't think anybody should necessarily do what it is that they don't believe makes sense. And so that's what I just want us to do ultimately. I trade Braun because me, I'm personally tired of all of this. I just want our assets that we lost trying to make everything great for him. I think the way I look at it is we won one out of what, four? That's a good ratio, man. We're good. Let's let's move on. That's my thinking. And then to put myself in a position to be able to snatch Evan Mobley from from Cleveland or snatch LaMelo Ball from Charlotte or snatch uh, Anthony Edwards from, um, you know, Minnesota. Because a lot of these guys who are playing really, really well, these youngsters, they are in small markets that may not necessarily have the Giannis mindset. They may want to go somewhere else. And those are the type of guys we need to start thinking about and targeting. Guys like Devin Booker and Chris Paul retires. That team might go back to the way they were before, maybe. Maybe not, but those are the guys I want to be able to have in a position to sign. Brandon Ingram, you know, the way he's playing, maybe he wants to come back to L.A., I would like to have a couple couple million dollars to give him. You know, these are the type of players the Lakers need to be thinking about. Not let's go old or let me see if I can reach in the past or let me get a guy who's in his prime so we can help LeBron. I don't. I'm, I'm over mess. I'm, I'm over that man. We've already won a championship with LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think we squeezed all the juice out of this thing. And and with the reports of him being willing to leave us to go play with his kid, which I support on a human level, um, you just got to kind of adhere to the truth that this guy's not going to retire here. He's going to retire somewhere else unless we have a way to get Bronny. And if we're going to find our way to get Bronny, then we got to find a way to have assets in order to acquire him. So either way, we need to make sure that we have our, our ducks in a row and just start thinking about our franchise. And I think the Lakers are finally starting to get that. So, you know, that's that's what it is, man. I, I want to applaud LeBron James for not demanding a trade because he could very well do that and win himself a championship this year, depending on where he lands. And I'm pretty sure we'd get a deal for him to get him anywhere he wanted to go. He's going to stick it out with us, so that deserves some respect. In fact, a lot of it. And he's, he's sticking with AAD, too. He's not leaving AD hanging. So, you know, there's something to be said for that, man. You know, after last night, I could see guys wanting to get up out of here. I could think of a couple superstars that would be checked out. So you got to give him his credit. But at the end of the day, we know that it's been reported that he has a lot of power, and he probably put this thing together himself. So... Whatever the case may be, I just hope the Lakers come around to understanding that the style of play must change and that Vogel must be lit up like a flame. My name is BDO44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.